Hey guys, Lancey here. Hope everyone's doing well. Thanks again for joining me. We're looking to some more MTG market movers for the day. So let's start off with Sorceress Queen from Arabian Nights. A 25% gain today, continuously moving up. Like I said before, and I think someone mentioned in the comments, you can get her from 4th edition for 84 cents. Even that's going up, which is actually kind of crazy. I think the last couple of days I actually saw that at like 50 cents. Yeah, so even, even the 4th edition copy is moving up. If you want to get it, why not? But if you want to get the Arabian Nights version, obviously it's Black Border, which I don't think any of these other ones are. So you're going to get something that you could consider valuable in that way. It's not a reserve list card. They could print it again in the exact same format with the exact same background. But you're going to get an Arabian Nights with the flag and everything. So maybe there's some worthwhile, some collector's storage value in that. Let me know. Lanawar Waste from Apocalypse. Now this card, on the other hand, you can get it for 76 cents from Commander 2020. 76 cents from, sorry, 79 cents, 76 cents. So if you are paying $10, you're getting it because it's an old school Apocalypse version. I myself do not have any of these. I'm sure I have plenty of these ones. At 84 cents, they're actually really, really good dual lands, especially for early Commander decks and commander bills that you don't want to spend too much money on. So, yeah, not bad. But for $10, maybe not. Unless you're going to collect it for the car's set, then the card itself. Mishra's Factory, Fall, Antiquities. So unexpectedly, no, sorry, expectedly catching up with the rest of the set's individual um, weather, or sorry, uh, what do you call that? Anyways, fall, summer, so so on, seasons, sorry. The Mistress Factory season, so this one is the fall one, obviously the nice little orange background. Pretty cool, you can get Mistress Factory itself, but obviously, as someone pointed out in the past, you cannot get the fall and all the artwork unique to that. So, cool if you guys got it. If not, then hold on, I mean, sorry, if not, then buying into it right now might be a bit risky since it's reaching the same top that it did before. But now it looks a bit more unmanipulated because if you look at the history, it's very like boxy, like go straight up, straight down. But now it looks like there's a lot of cards changing hands because it looks like there's much more refined steps in there. So maybe something's changed. Tenab the Harvester. Now this card was a commander card that was pretty cool. It's a dragon as well, which makes sense. You can get it for $0.85, cents, $2 in plane chase. The market's obviously gone way past TCG right now, so TCG might be recording $0.85, $0.87, cents, but I'd probably assume that you can get him for like $2 at this point. If you have him, maybe hold on to him. He might continue going up. But the reason for him moving up is obviously commander and dragons, I assume. His color combination is actually kind of awkward for dragon decks themselves because he has no red. Next, Simic Signet from Secret Lairs. These are probably costed at about the price I'd expect, around about six to four dollars, because the Secret Lairs themselves cost around about twenty twenty five dollars. So yeah, even if it's a fifty cents card in the usual idea of market, they're used in so many commander decks that they probably have some value to them no matter what. So yeah, but I just don't know if I'd buy into them right now. Coloss Colossus of Sardinia, Sar Sardia, sorry. Antiquities, not on the reserve list. You can get them for 85 cents. You can get them for 40, oh, sorry, 44 cents, 48 cents. But Antiquities is an old set, obviously very respected or at least collectible. Um, he has started dropping in price. The one that's moving is actually the average market price, which I assume is for the really high end worthwhile cards that you could probably sell for like a premium just because they haven't been, there's no damage done to them. I think that it's, I can't keep saying overpriced because, you know, it's not on the reserve list, but it's still sitting at $25, $32. But it's really up to you to decide if you want it or not. Maybe there's some sentiment, sentimental value in there that's going to cost you, give you some value for money. I'm going to also open up the Almond Cat version of Aggravated Assault because that always interests me. I have one of those. I got it for because I just thought it was a cool card, but seeing how this is a huge run up now, I am very interested to see what's going to happen because right now that's exponential growth. That's not sustainable. 
Nope, not at all. So do not buy into this unless you already have these cards. Selling into this is perfectly viable. The market price is different to the actual average price that's got taking off right now. If we look at TCG, I'll have a quick see and so what's been happening. You can see that um, Aggravated Assault, the Armand Cat in Invocation, has also been following a similar but not as extreme pattern, moving up kind of slowly in the background, $73 for the market foil. So we'll have to see what happens. A lightly played version of Aggravated Assault is now $52.99. Does that seem like a lot? Because in my mind, that seems like a lot. Fracturing Gust really cool we saw the other one dropping uh, sorry we saw the other one increasing price and now probably going to drop this one should be worth more than what it is right now and hmm, that's annoying someone called me but they didn't want to talk to me anyways going back to fracturing gus so i would expect this to catch up with the other version of fracturing dust the shadow Moor version is now worth 13.99 the from the vault annihilation is nine dollars 38 there is no way that this is going to sit even i mean nine dollars yeah okay but there's no way it's going to sit like $5.70 or whatever. Even $9 feels a bit low. I'd expect it to go at least to $10, maybe even $11. And the average should stay around about that. It might even go beyond, depending on how many of these actually sold. Armored Sky Hunter from Commander Legends. Now, I noticed this card. It was pretty good. I didn't pick up any or anything. But, you know, if you wanted to, this is probably a good time to look into it. Because I feel like this is probably one of those cards that's going to stabilize around about two to three dollars into the future and maybe even higher if more uh, equipment support is released 51 cents on tcg is not right wirewood herald from a uh, dual dex anthology yeah it's a cool card it's a good elf card started moving up from 69 cents oh, 69 perfect timing 27 november 27 2020 now sitting at $1.84, so that's almost a 3 or even a bit more gain on that. You got an Onslaught version for $0.31, cents, which I don't think is going to be right anymore either. $1.84 on market price is probably where this car is going to be sitting for a while. Sol Kanar, the Swamp King from Legends. It's been a while since we saw this guy. Again, gaining. I have a version of this card. I'm pretty sure it's the Time Shifted or the Chronicle one. So it pretty much means that if you want almost a $100 card you're going to get the legends version because there's going to be some value to it because it's legends if you want to play with this guy and just make a joke commander deck then you're going to just pick up the time shifted one and sleeve him up has an has a zone tomorrow i don't think i've said that word a few times but he is actually a reserve list card and he's actually really good like uh, sorry he's not really am like amazingly or uh, win the game good he's Pretty cool for a token themed like idea of a commander deck. I think he's cool, but I never got him because he was always super expensive. I think I got him to commander like at some point in my life, I would have been able to get him for like 20 cents, but certainly I missed that boat. Now he's sitting at $300, and now it's up to you guys to decide if $300 is what you want to pay for him. Red Mana Battery from Legends. Cool card. It's not on the reserve list. There's a 48 cents version from 4th edition. If you want it, this one is from Legends, which means it's going to get a premium on it. The premium looks like it's about 800% or is that 1,600%? Because if you can get it for 40, 50 cents and this one is sitting at almost $7, then that's a lot of gains to be had. So you guys can let me know if that's actually something valuable either. It's an okay card, I just don't think it's that amazing. Standard in MTG Goldfish. So we got a Magda Brazen Outlaw gaining by 14%. I think she had a bit of a drop yesterday, but outside of that, nothing really even hit the 10% mark other than her. Moving to Pioneer, nothing again hit the 10% mark. That is a actually been a couple of days where nothing... Like, not every single one of these cards hit like a 50%, 25% gain. So we'll have to see what's happening right here. Things really have slowed down. So maybe something has changed. Not too sure. Fracturing Gust is up by 14, uh, 21%, sitting at $14.47. And you've got Pithing Needle, another gain of 12%, gain, sitting at $13.48. And Goblin King, gaining by 10%, is now sitting at $11.37. 
The biggest drop, engineered explosives, dropping down by 12%, to now set at $45.81. And really, that is it, because the weeklies, we keep tabs on anyways every now and then. As for the dailies, doesn't look like it's, it's a very quiet day. And the funny thing is, I'll let you guys know, it's been a very, very quiet day. Um, in Sorry, not a very quiet day in the market. It's, it's everything is sitting on a very important line in the market. So you can see that the dollar has dropped, but it hasn't dropped to a point where it looks like it's showing a huge amount of weakness. We had the golden cross for the dollar as well, so we'll see if that was a fake out. It really should test that 200 at some point, but we'll see if it just continues bouncing off the 50. Gold very cautiously sitting at 1800. If it hits the 200 and goes above it and starts going up, then that means that gold is now betting for inflation to happen. If it hits the 200, gets rejected, breaks this uh, forward trend line that we've had since I think 2018. Yeah, 14th August 2018, we've had this upward trend line and gold almost broke out of it, but it managed to recover. But the 200 day is now putting pressure on it. If this trend line, if it breaks down, then you might have an opportunity to buy gold in the future. I know this has all of a sudden become a finance, but it also means that inflation isn't happening. Bitcoin is its own monster. Bitcoin is following the dollar more than anything else. If the dollar breaks down, there's a chance that Bitcoin could go up. If the dollar breaks down, there's a chance that Bitcoin, Bitcoin could follow. It's a weird one, but it is kindly overbought. VIX. VIX is sitting at $17. Uh, so I personally think that it may get another bounce, but we'll have to see what the deal is on that end. The uh, AUD, USD, obviously huge bounce for that. US oil. Anyways, guys, I'm getting distracted. This is probably the second thing I should be doing is the finance because I enjoy it. Anyways, I'll leave you guys to it. Have fun. Have a good one and see you later.